Today we will be looking at surprisal values for BESI sequences. So if you haven't looked at my videos regarding BESI sequences, you may want to take a look at those before watching this current video. So we will be looking at BESI sequences of order 8, quasi BESI sequences of order 16, and Bessie sequences of order 32. Now recall that the quintessential structure for a Bessie sequence is the following, 10010110, where the zeros and ones are simply denoting dichotomous characteristics, or we view those cards as having dichotomous characteristics. So what does a Bessie sequence of order 8 performance look like? Well, there are many, many performances that can be designed taking advantage of the wonderful properties of Bessie sequences. So I've listed just one here. So what does it look like? Eight random cards are chosen after thorough mixing of the eight cards, they are divided into two piles of four cards that match a written prediction. Okay, so let me just show you kind of what it would look like. So the idea is that you would start with eight random cards in this particular rendition of a performance using Bessie sequences. And the spectator is free to mix the cards as much as they like. These are truly eight random cards. So you just put out eight random cards. Maybe we'll take some from different places. Okay, there we go. We have eight cards. Okay, and then what a person would do is we would just take a look at these eight cards, kind of lay them out like so. And then you as the performer would simply write down the identities of the cards that were freely chosen by the spectator. Now secretly what you're going to do is on one line of your piece of paper or for one grouping of the cards, you're going to write down the card that's in the first position, the fourth position, which is the ten of spades, the sixth position, ten of hearts, the seventh position, queen of diamonds. That will constitute one group, and the remaining four cards will constitute the other group. So essentially, you're just taking advantage of the structure right here, okay? And then you simply just close up these cards, and then with the Bessie sequence of order eight, if you've watched any of the videos, we can mix this packet virtually forever <laughs> and not lose information as to where those two groupings of cards are relative to each other. Okay, that's the amazing thing. And then at the very end, after all of that mixing, where key choices are being made by the spectator, that's important. The spectator is really dictating how things are done. These eight cards are divided into two piles of four cards. Okay, so they're divided into two piles of four cards. And the dealing out into the two piles, if done correctly, will still look like a random dealing out of the cards into two piles of four from the perspective of the spectator. But nonetheless, when these cards are revealed within each pile of four, when you reveal what those are, it will perfectly match the groupings that you've made note of on your piece of paper. And that's after tremendous mixing and quote, randomization of the cards has occurred. So the question is, what is the surprisal associated with this particular routine? In fact, it will be the same surprisal value for any routine taking advantage of the Bessie sequence structure for a packet of eight cards. Okay, so that's what we're looking at today. So what I've done here on the right is I've created a Desmos activity 
that will help us calculate the surprisal values for Bessy sequences and quasi Bessy sequences. So let's go ahead and take a look at this situation. You correctly predict a group of cards in no specific order that are randomly chosen from what the spectator believes is a completely shuffled, that is mixed, packet of cards. Probability analysis. We will assume that each card is equally likely to be selected for any one group. The spectator assumes that a group of R cards, so in our particular case it will be four cards, are randomly chosen from a randomized packet of eight cards. So N for us right now is eight. The number of ways of choosing R cards, that is four cards, from a packet of N cards, that is eight cards, is found by performing the following calculation. N factorial divided by R factorial times N minus R factorial. Okay, so you'll probably recognize this as the formula that gives you the number of combinations of N objects taken R at a time. Now, of course, only one of these groups consists of exactly the R predicted cards. Therefore, the probability of drawing the R predicted cards in no specific order from a randomized packet of N cards is going to be one divided by the above quantity, which will simply flip the fraction. So if you notice here, I have a slider which will allow us to adjust this activity to the various Bessie sequences. Now at the moment I have it set for the quasi Bessie sequence of order 16. So we'll go ahead and adjust that down for our current activity. So there we go, we have eight cards. Now we are selecting four of them. So the number of ways that you can select four cards from a set of eight cards is 70. So that means in particular, if we correctly guess the composition of one of two of these piles of four cards each, there is a one divided by 70 probability that we would be successful in our guess or prediction. So very small. Now let's go ahead and convert that to a surprisal value where we will be able to interpret it in terms of ordinary coin tosses. Okay, so let's move down here. So recall the surprisal value for a random event is equal to log base two of one over the probability that that random event occurs. So here what I've done is I've replaced R with the variable X so that we can graph it and also create a table of surprisal values. So to be clear, N right now is set equal to eight and R is set equal to four. So with those two values, we find that the surprisal value for a Bessie sequence performance of order eight is 6.13 bits. Once again, what does that mean? Well, we'll go ahead and round it down. That's reasonable to do, so six bits. So what it means is all of the performances that I have shown on my channel that deal with Bessie sequences of order eight, each of those have a surprisal value of six bits. Once again, what does that mean? That means the level of surprise associated with those performances in the minds of the spectator is the same level of surprise they would experience in witnessing someone tossing six fair coins high up into the air and having that person call out heads for all of them and then watch those crazy coins hit the table and bounce and eventually settle down and all six coins are face up. The level of surprise associated with that random event is the same, in fact, slightly less than that of any of the Bessie sequences of order eight routines. 
And then what we've done below here is I've gone ahead and graphed it for various values. And remember, X represents how many cards or the size of the group that we're selecting. So we, right now, are focused on selecting four cards out of the eight card packet. And so there we go. There's our surprisal value that we saw earlier. And as you might imagine, that is also the maximum surprisal value for selecting a group of cards from a packet of eight cards. Any smaller or larger selection of cards will lead to a lower surprisal value than we achieved in all of our performances with Bessie sequences of order eight.